So if you're watching 420 grams and uh, back on the show uh, by public demand and also after uh, chasing him down all across the country, uh, is he goes to match head coach of the Indian men's uh, national football team. Good to have you uh, with us as always, uh, coach. After what was a mixed performance in the first game against Myanmar, uh, we heard from you, of course, after the game. Uh, we watched the game also, so uh, we're able to make some sense of what's going on. Uh, how have the three, four days since that game been? A uh, couple of new boys in the squad. How, how is the team coming together? Uh, in terms of the ideas that you're looking at, what, what are you trying to work on at this moment? Obviously, it was uh, kind of a strange preparation for this uh, tournament because of the myself schedule in the playoffs and all that impossibility of getting all the boys together at the same time and working on some patterns. So the decision was easy to make, to be honest, because we were quite sure we will not be able to use any of the boys who are involved in the ISL finals, except Sunil, who expressed wish and willingness to start the game and play because he didn't have enough minutes mm. during the season. Mm. Rest of the boys were there. Uh, we worked with them in Kolkata, preparing them for Myanmar game and uh, we tried to, to make it easier for them, you know, putting in the first 11, in the starting 11, tandems from the clubs on one side, it was back in uh, Mehtab, on the other side, Sana and Akash, because they understand each, each other much better than, mm. than others. And uh, starting the game with uh, in the formation 4-3-3, with the two attacking midfielders, Yasir and Tapa, who we were thinking they could manage to control the game and provide good balls to the flanks where there is always open spaces. And knowing that Myanmar, Myanmar is playing quite tight at the back, sitting back and playing counter attacks, you know. Mm. So we try to use Yasir and uh, Tapa providing the balls to Chante and Bipin and then finishing with Sunil and two more in the box. Obviously, it didn't work as we expected because Myanmar, which proved to be the truth, is not an easy opponent as everybody thinks. Yeah. Uh, it, it could clearly be seen in the game they played against Kyrgyzstan, uh, which they deserve to win. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just proves that we made a really good result winning the game, even considering that the clear goal was disallowed to us, that one for sure possible second penalty was not given to us, which could make this this result look far, far better for us. And at the end, knowing that uh, this lineup was not the first choice lineup for us, uh, we should be happy overall about it and look from more from positive size, mm. side than, than criticize anything about this game. Right. Uh, next game, are you more likely to play what is your best 11? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and I mean, best 11, always having in mind that the best 11 are 15, 16 players, yeah. you know. And uh, because we use some of our uh, first choice players in the first game, uh, they will probably be rested now and they might come on in the second half. Mm. Uh, so, so, are you getting a sort of clear idea now of what that 15, 16 uh, core is... I always had a clear that idea, but that I idea doesn't depend on me, who I want to put there. It depends who is available. Yeah. You know, I don't have Ashikuruna available here because of the simple reason that he he got injected three, four times prior to the ISL semi-finals at the finals and he got injured. So he's my first choice player as a forward, mm. you know. Also, we are suffering now from uh, having Manvir injured for the very same reason, mm. you know. He's, he's bringing his kind of injury here, where, where, uh, which, which was produced a long time ago, and he was playing with it in ISL. So it's, it's never about me, you know, knowing who are the best 11 I want to take out on the pitch, but availability of the players hmm. is something which at the end creates the starting level. Hmm. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, so, just a little bit on, on the game against Kyrgyz Republic, anything you noticed from that match against Myanmar that you'll be looking to uh, focus on, to exploit, and also also in terms of building, because, okay, the results uh, are important to one extent. The fans want to see the team win, the team I'm sure wants to win as well. Uh, but since we're building towards something, uh, towards the Asian Cup, how the team plays and, and whether they are able to execute your, your instructions 
is probably more important. So what, what are you sort of conveying to them? What do you want to see on the pitch uh, tomorrow? I always want to see commitment, full commitment. That's one thing which we didn't create against Man. I was not happy with few players' performance, not performance in a way of tactical points of the game. I want commitment. Uh, you know that during one game, each one of the player on average has ball in possession more or less than two minutes. Mm. So what do you do? This rest of the game for 88 minutes, that is what counts. And uh, for me, the, the things are more difficult because our players are enjoying comfort of ISL pace, which is far below the pace needed for international football, especially if we talk about the finals of Asia Cup. You know. And then we need to change that mindset, we need to change every time, start working again on the pace, on the attitude, on commitment, on the mindset, everything needs to be changed. Because when you play in a certain way for three and a half months during the season in your club, and it comes uh, to time when you need to change everything mm -hmm. about your habits. Yeah. It's not easy for the boys. We need to understand that. Mm -hmm. One thing is what I want. The other thing is how much time it takes them to adapt to that. Mm -hmm. Are you getting that kind of time? No, still not, obviously. Still not. So, so is, there, is, there kind of, is there a platform for conversation? Listen, it's something which all the coaches in the world are facing, which yeah. are national team coaches. Yeah. We cannot speak about uh, uh, prioritizing me as a coach in regards to the rest of the coaches of the national teams. But we do have possibility of doing so and we are not using it. Mm. That's my problem here. Mm. You see, because our season doesn't go on for, for eight months. It goes on for three and a half months. And then in, in such a case, more, uh, uh, much more things should be committed to the national team success. Mm. That's how I see it. Oh, and why why is it uh, we keep talking about the results or, or the progress of the national team being so important? Uh, as, as someone you know, you were a new newly independent country uh, when uh, your national team went and did what it did at the world stage, uh, playing against the best in the world, coming from a nation that was newly created and, and off what, three four yeah, million. Yeah, but with the old football structure, very old structure. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Yugoslavia had amazing sport culture. Mm. and sports structure. In 1987, Yugoslavia was world champion in three sports, basketball, handball and football. Mm. World champion. Mm. You know, I was part of the generation which won the, the gold medal in uh, world champion number 20 in Chile. Mm. And from that generation, six from, of us from Croatia were in the starting level. Mm. And that was the core base uh, for the future Croatian national team. So the country was new, but the structure was beautiful old mm. and well-functioning. Mm. And that structure was producing the players throughout the times and decades in Croatia. That's something which is obviously missing here, mm. you know. Uh, we cannot leave, uh, we can leave our dreams and it's beautiful to have dreams, you know. But also we need to have a certain point of reality where we stand at the moment, how big the gap is between us and the leading countries in football in Asia. First that, once we become strong power in Asia, then we can start dreaming with more real and objective targets how to get to the world. Mm. You know, you need to go step by step. 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 Obviously, in football, you can surprise better teams once in 10 games. Yeah. Once, you know. Yeah. But to do it continuously mm. in one tournament, it's difficult to expect mm. if you are a large horse. Mm. So, so, is there any conversation happening that is kind of inclusive? Where all the stakeholders, everyone who is kind of uh, invested, many in things are going on, but uh, uh, still not time to talk about it. Mm. You see that uh, the president and the CEO are engaged in many, many conversations and uh, trying to arrange as many as possible games and tournaments for us in the near future. So we prepare for the Asian Cup in the best possible way, mm. and we all appreciate that these efforts, you know. But also, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy because most of the teams have everything sorted already. You know, we are just trying to do so. And it's not going to be easy to find uh, the opponents we want, to, mm. to arrange the games, to make sure that uh, everybody is happy and satisfied with everything in full capacity about the future ISL season and the needs for the national team. 
But every, everyone needs to sacrifice at least something, so we come to an equal, equal situation for everyone. You know? Yes, that's right. something. Compromise needs to be done yeah. if we want to take our football forward. Right. Uh, in, in the conversations mm -hmm. that happen on, uh, and, uh, okay, you know, social media, all kinds of things are said all the time, and uh, I guess it's important to not pay attention to all of it. Uh, but do you see also a mismatch between expectations and, and the reality that you were speaking of, uh, not just of... No, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We need to be realistic and say that Indian football was far better 30 years ago. Far, far better. You know, because 30 years ago, or 20 years ago even, you had players here with the, with the good developmental skills, basic technical skills mm -hmm. in football. That's something which is missing now, because mm -hmm. Development was somehow put on the side in Indian football for a couple of decades. Mm. There was no structure in state competitions. There were no competitions at all. We were not taking care about under 15, under 17, which is the crucial age in football. Even today, we don't have state competitions for under 17. We are having under 17 national team going around, having exposure. But India is a country needs to have under 17 competition in each state. Yeah. Because that's the crucial age for senior team football, mm -hmm. you know, and the, the scouting system needs to be at the highest possible level. With the technology India is having, mm -hmm. with the brains India is having, we should achieve these things very soon. Mm -hmm. uh, your your uh, also decision, or, or how, how good was that process, uh, you were of um, staying on till the Asian Cup, but deciding uh, that that will be sort of the end of your engagement? Uh, with the Indian national team, uh, what what was your thinking or reasoning behind uh, behind that? Yeah, I'll tell you in a simple words. Uh, what brought me here to India? I said before, uh, biggest challenge in the world in football, by far. Uh, the other point was, which was quite crucial. I was expecting that at some point the government would understand and support us in a way to use OC players to represent the country. That's something which can make an immediate impact Absolutely. on the results. Mm. And that's what India wants. Mm. So, but it seems that we don't have the same understanding there. And things still might turn out a better way, you know. And I still hope it will happen because we are the only country in the world not using this opportunity. Mm. To make football uh, at least same popular in India as cricket is. You need a result impact. Then people will get attached to it, people get attached to stars, people get attached to young boys who are successful, who can, who can do good as individuals or as a team. Mm. And India has at the moment 15 to 20 boys who were developed, of Indian origin, of course, mm. who were developed foreign academies who were born in all over the world, who are playing at the moment in respective European clubs or overseas clubs, and who could imagine, immensely help Indian national team to become a great strength in Asian football. So, do we really want this to happen as immediate impact, you know, still didn't happen. That's one of the reasons why I decided not to stay here after the Asian Cup, no matter what the result is. You yeah. know, I have other aspirations. I think that nearly five years will be the, the time here that we made certain progress, but we are limited in going forward mm. in such a way. Mm. It will take decades. And to wait a couple of decades here to do something bigger and better, it's not a good option for me. Good. Fair enough. That's a pretty clear and uh, honest answer. Uh, so, so where, how, who do you think should uh, sort of take over that mantle? And and do you think Indian coaches are getting the kind of opportunity? Because you you talk of the development of players, but the development and education of coaches. No, you cannot. Important. You cannot engage Indian coaches into development program. They can be assistants. They can be in the learning process there. But the basic thing to make this develop, development structure and the process successful is to bring over foreign coaches with a great experience in development of football. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to put the structure right. And if you look the size of India, the population of India, the selection should be at least five million kids. 
initial selection. Mm -hmm. And having all the numbers uh, which are coming from other countries, throughout such a process you can get to a point where you have 50,000 boys at the beginning stage competing. And then you can have at the end, at the end of the process, which is a 12-year process, you can have 50 great players, but it's a 12-year work. Uh, in, in terms of the current lot of players, do you think, uh, do you think there are any that could perhaps uh, use opportunities to go abroad to learn a bit more, like your pre played when he was younger, or do you think it's too late for many of the boys who are now? For some of them, it's late. For some of them, uh, is not acceptable because going from uh, uh, certain salaries to uh, five or ten times less mm. to play in a better league, it's not acceptable for these boys because mostly they are coming from the poor families and enjoying the salary which ISL clubs are providing at the moment. It's a great comfortable zone for them, which is uh, putting them in the situation to be with their hands tied. They're back, you know, and, and I don't blame them, uh, you know, but that's not something which is helping Indian football. It, it can't take us forward. If these young boys are not having their mindset straight up that the material is not the most important thing at the moment in their life, that the challenges are greater than ISL only, mm. uh, then we're not going to go forward very soon. We have only 11 clubs at the moment, uh, one more next season. It will take five, six, seven, eight years to have a proper league of 20 clubs, then second high league of 20 clubs also competing. Uh, at, at the national level, if we speak, and uh, after that, it will take another 10 years to get things sorted out. But it's a long process. And don't forget, in the meantime, all the rest of the countries will do things better and quicker. Mm. And the diverse point of what we are looking and witnessing throughout the time is that these countries which are in front of us are making up a bigger between us yeah. in regards to the quality. And that's something nobody realizes, nobody, nobody is thinking of. Because they are investing more, they have structured football, they have structured scouting system, uh, they are investing much more, they have better infrastructure, <coughs> and that's what it counts. Uh, if anything, the World Cup was an example of that. You see whether Saudi Arabia or Japan or any of these Asian countries, uh, the kind of performances that they put in against the top teams, uh, Germany, Spain, uh, Argentina, of course, uh, indicates what you're talking about, the gap and how much uh, more investment is going on in Asia. Uh, but, so, uh, given that, you know, all of our hands are kind of uh, tied, Igor, uh, what are the positives that you see from, from where we are uh, today and how things have developed since you came to India? That, that could clearly see be seen through the presentation I made and sent to our new uh, new president and uh, general secretary, which uh, numbers are proving everything, you know, comparing the prior qualifiers and the last qualifiers we had, we are far, far more successful, far, far more convincing, far, far more uh, better performing. And uh, I would say that this cycle is cycle is behind us in creating a pool of 35 players, mm. uh, using them to finish qualifiers in style. And it was not easy, it was a suffering process, you know, that you witnessed that from yeah. the very beginning, you know. So many people were confused what the coach is doing, you know, why this player, why that player, I don't mind, it, you know, because if you take 100 million people in India, putting first 11, no one will match yeah. another one, you know. So uh, that's beauty of football. Mm -hmm. Different opinions, different thoughts, and I, I don't mind anyone criticizing, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get out positives out of every criticism if there is an argument for it, of course. Yeah. And that's the only way how I, I see the things in life moving forward. Uh, since you brought up some of the criticism, one, uh, uh, there was some, uh, you know, we saw Full House uh, the other day, and, and uh, but uh, the crowd was quite silent and, and you know, so, yeah, but we appreciate, I didn't like some comments, you know, which wanted to turn out this, what I said, Yeah, you know. That's what I, I said, wondered. clearly, I love you guys for mm. are coming here, for uh, attending the game in numbers and supporting us. Mm. That was the first point. But the, yeah. the second point, uh, uh, you obviously coming to the ground to help the team. The team, yeah. 
so at certain points, and I've seen some comments from Ranin De Singh and, and others, which mm. are, uh, I, I will not comment. But, mm. uh, it doesn't work one way. Mm. We understand that we are on the pitch to entertain the crowd. Yeah. A crowd is there to help yeah. us when the things are not going right, mm. or not in a way that we want. Mm. You know, that's how it works in life. Yeah. Everyone needs to give something to yeah. to have success at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, and you could feel clearly in the second half how uh, for 15, 20 minutes the things went different. How the boys react when the crowd gets cheering them up and standing up and ovations are there, and then then go they go tackling, they go fighting for each ball, which should be all the time. Yeah. But most of these boys are very young. Mm. They need to feel support. They need mm. to feel they are backed up by the mm. crowd. Not, you know, having this quiet stadium, which brings tension into each of their decisions. Yeah. It's yeah. totally different. It's completely different. Yeah. Uh, so just taking that uh, forward, uh, Igor, you know, another conversation we keep having is uh, around a philosophy that, that the national team should look at. And then maybe something consistent from, from a young age onwards so that you know, at the end of that 12 year process, there is some idea. Uh, is that even a feasible idea? Can we even. Yeah, uh, you should start talking about it. Yeah. You know. I mean, what philosophy? What is football philosophy? Football player, which is complete, needs to have capacity to adapt to any opponent which he's going to face. Mm. And one day he will face a uh, low ranked opponent, next day he will face better ranked opponent. So you're going to have the same philosophy towards football. Philosophy is to go out and win the game mm. in the easiest possible way. Yeah. And that will depend who you're going to face on the pitch. So one day philosophy will be to keep tight lines, to stay 30 meters from your goalkeeper with the mid press, you know, and strike with, with counter attacks. Mm. The other way, when you face lower ranked teams, the philosophy will be continuous attacks. To both flanks, all players forward, high press, and that's how it football works. And football is changing every day. So, what kind of uh, approach we could have and say, you know, we're gonna create our football based on philosophy, which will work what next thirty years? Mm. Football is changing. Mm. You cannot mm. speak about philosophy in football. Philosophy in football is do your best and give everything you win the game, mm. and that doesn't depend on you. Yeah. So, uh, again, it's not meaning to be critical of the players because, uh, you know, like you were saying, they, they come out of a system, uh, they don't exist in a vacuum, nor, nor do they come, you know, <coughs> drop from the sky. Yeah, the best, uh, the uh, best uh, example is Yassi. Mm. Wonderful player, no? Great technique, wonderful left foot, but whole season he plays in his club as a right wing. He's, he's enjoying comfort on the right side, near the line. No one can come to him from his back, you know. He receives the ball, comes forward, goes back to his left foot, put crosses, provides the balls. Mm. Wonderful. Mm. But he's number 10. That's how I see it. And it's not easy for him when I put him as a midfield player inside, where he's surrounded with all the other players and we expect him to do good things. I don't blame him for having quiet night the other day, mm. you know. But we all need to understand that we cannot expect them to switch on, switch off, switch on, switch off. Mm. No, so how, so how is that adaptability at present? It's difficult for them. It's difficult for them. You know, we have players who we targeted as a possible replacement for Sunil. Mm. Ifshan is not playing at all. Mm. Uh, Manger is playing as a right winger. You know, Liston is playing as a left winger. Rahi Ali was the only one more involved, I would say, in these central positions and getting minutes, but he suffers chronic injuries throughout the last couple of years and didn't have continuity in his game. And obviously, we are having lots of problems in, in scoring goals because of such reasons. Yeah. And this season, I would say, was not a step forward for us mm. overall not talking about national team, because we didn't see, apart from uh, Siva Shakti, a new face mm. in Indian football. Mm. And that's already a problem. Yeah. Season before that, we, we, we could see clearly many new faces because we reduced foreign player policy from uh, six to, to three plus one. 
which brought so many beautiful, young, talented Indian boys to the pitch. Now we need to start thinking how we're going to get strikers and attacking midfielders and centre back mm. onto the screen. Mm. And that's why I'm saying I'm not ordering to anyone because I'm not in position to order anyone anything. I'm professional here. Yeah. And my responsibility, apart from doing my job uh, here with the national team, is to advise. Mm. And I am advising strongly everyone to think once again, why do we need I live with foreign players? That needs to be a fantastic platform for Indian homegrown players to develop their skills, to get the possibility of rising up as a strikers, as attacking midfielders, as a, as a center backs. Mm. And I hope soon we're going to come to a point where we're going to think about when and how to recruit uh, foreign players. There needs to be criteria which needs to help Indian football overall, not yeah. only a certain club at the moment. Mm. You know, this criteria needs to be more strict if we want football to go forward. Do you think in that sense there's a confusion of priorities between you know, the, the image of it, the commercial motivations and the core of it, which is uh, the actual growth? Because there are people, there are kids, uh, you know, we guys here also, who are spending so much time watching Indian football, even though we know what the reality of the standard is. And you have access to uh, the entire world's football uh, on your television. Uh, so for those who are, you know, taking the time to watch what is happening domestically to uh, support it, uh, do you think that they are, in a sense, being let down by some of this prioritization? Because when an ego so much comes to India, having seen and done what you have at the global stage, world level, uh, we would assume that, that your opinions and advice uh, Hold some uh, value. It's not just and and getting a high profile. Maybe maybe, maybe maybe it was not it was not followed by the way it should be. You know, I had a great great uh, communication and coordination with Arish Akiara. It was fantastic to work together. You know, and he was so helpful. But you know, most of the times others you couldn't find or get to. And he was the only one, you know, actually uh, thinking and caring about, about the national team and trying to help in a way that we get what we need. But if I tell you that we didn't have a GPS system for two years as a national team, that's something which sounds like embarrassment. You know, that we were not able to, to recover the GPS which was provided to us with, and it, it got stuck somewhere in Emirates or Qatar and we played one game. And it took us two years. Uh, this equipment is something which is obviously very necessary and, and the coach needs that. Not because the coach uh, doesn't uh, have possibility to do his job without it. Mm. I work without and when GPS was not well, there. Not, not, not exist, yeah, yeah. But it helps to get certain information which will maybe prevent some injuries, which will show me that some players, if I take them out two minutes prior to when I was thinking to take them off, I will save them from certain problems and injuries and all that. And things were not at the right level for, for better achievements. Mm -hmm. I need to say that. Although, when I go back to that first game which we played in Guati, yeah. in qualifiers against yeah. Oman, that game could have changed everything. Mm -hmm. Winning that game could have changed drastically the, the final results in the second phase of the qualifiers. You know. And I feel so sorry that we couldn't find more energy, more positive mindset to resist those 10 minutes before conceding these two goals. Yeah. Because it could drastically change everything. Could have, yeah. And, and even coming to the draw that will happen, you know, <coughs> the, pot, the pot that we would end up in would might have been different. So uh, when it comes to the finals, we might have had a slightly easier opponent to face uh, if that happened. But anyway, it is. It is what it is. Uh, uh, maybe uh, last couple of minutes, last couple of questions. Uh, uh, looking forward, do you have a wish list uh, for the next six months? Uh, things that you need to work on? Because again, it's a December, January tournament given the weather in Qatar, similar to the World Cup. Uh, so you will be in the middle of an ISL season. Uh, what do you want uh, for the national team? What are the kind of opponents you wish to play against if, let's say, you have your pick? I would say that uh, these opponents are not something which is 
so important who we're going to face. Uh, the crucial time for us and for achievement in the, in the future Asian Cup is four weeks preparation camp prior to the Asian Cup. You will be happy with the rest them. of it doesn't matter. FIFA window of September, uh, October, November, it really doesn't matter. Doesn't change anything, mm. you know. So uh, it would be very important that everyone understands that uh, this camp prior to the AFC Cup is the crucial thing we need to think about. You know, the rest of it is less important and it will not affect us. Mm. So, so that's it. One one point agenda that that should be quite easy to sort out. It should be quite easy. I'm trying to make it as as easy as possible to everyone involved, you know, to make a good decision and proper decision. Mm. Although it's not going to be easy because mm. we have uh, we have wonderful new people in charge of the football house and they're trying to do everything to provide us more games. Mm. But now also we need to be careful how many games we're going to play because, uh, as I said last time, we were in a position to have only four months players involved in football during the year, mm. and now they are not having break at all. Yeah. So we need to be careful because we do have, between these uh, wishes we are having about uh, South Cup, uh, Hero Intercontinental mm. Cup, which are coming, and then FIFA windows uh, following that, we do have our clubs competing in the in the Asian Asian uh, uh, games for the slots in, in Asian uh, oh, okay. Cup and Champions League, yeah. you know. So, and most of these players are in the international team. So yes. we need to be very careful not to put ourselves in a risk to lose five, six players because of injuries, mm. because they didn't have enough play. Mm. Oh, all right, Butch, I think uh, we, we leave it here uh, for now. Thank you so much for uh, talking to us, for giving us your take on things uh, and pretty Most straightforwardly you know, and straight up. Uh, we hope to keep these conversations going and, and uh, uh, for those of you uh, watching, if you have questions for the coach as well that were unanswered, please send them over and uh, hopefully we can raise them the next time we have an opportunity to meet. Uh, but we'll leave it there for now. Like, share, subscribe, uh, do all of that. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you for joining us.